evenings of March 23rd and 24th, 2007, Carol L. McCoy, known to her cultural family and henceforth to the world as Kayan Day, and close friend Seiji Gamage, joined by colleague Mae Griffin, gave their thesis concert performance in partial fulfillment of the Florida State University Master of Fine Arts and Dance. I feel like this is the biggest thing. Both Kayende and Seiji showed their talent, skill, and artistry in dance and choreography through a series of performances that impressed and delighted the audience. They were joined by friends, family, teachers, colleagues, and mentors, and were graced with the presence of Ms. Cleo Parker Robinson, founder and executive artistic director of the Cleo Parker Robinson Dance Ensemble. Both Kayende and Seiji had danced with her company prior to entering the returning professional MFA program at FSU. Images and interviews in this film were gathered on those two nights and at a family brunch the following Sunday and are meant to celebrate both Kayende and Seiji and their accomplishments. On Friday, the 27th of April, 2007, both Kayende and Seiji were awarded the Florida State University Masters of Fine Arts in Dance. Something that you don't know when they leave you, you don't know. You don't know that they're a part of you and you're a part of them. You don't know that. You feel it, you believe it, but then with that distance, that space, keeps you a little bit like, well, what was all of that about? You know, you just don't make that connection. Tonight when I saw them, I said, wow. I could see, I could remember choreographers. I could remember places. I could see all of those things happen at the same moment. And then I could see them absolutely being present and totally committed. And that's all I ever asked of them, to be present and totally committed. Give honestly of yourself. 
and to each other. You have stayed in your vision. You have used the dance as a vehicle of bringing people together and bringing your own sense together is really a blessing. And I just am blessed to be here. Um, the concert last night was extraordinary and I will take those images and the spirit and the energy back to the company and embrace them with your love and your discipline and remind them of the work that they they need to do but can do because of your inspiration. And I just love seeing you on stage as artists, which I was able to do for five years. But to see you now um, encouraging others, teaching others, inspiring others, and um, uplifting others means so much to me because that's really what you've worked so hard to do. And then to just keep opening it up so you can keep strutting through that, that journey really, really fine in your way. And um, the fact that you're doing it together uh, gives me great, great strength because it makes me feel as though that what we've worked on as a family, as an extended family, and that's what dance is, um, that we're standing on the shoulders of those who paved the way for us as a family and we now can have others stand on our shoulders and I will be standing on your shoulders. You know, I feel that that's the beauty of it, that that's the connection of it. And I felt Bobby Shange was present. I felt his spirit yesterday before I even got on the plane. And uh, many of the artists uh, last night I felt, um, of course, Marceline Freeman, who hasn't uh, been able to dance and, and do the things that she passed on to others. And I felt a real joy in my heart that she felt she was right there with us. And, uh, Ron Brown and the impact that Ron Brown had on you, Seiji, and that you were able to take that and share it in the most honest and individual way, the joy, and with all those beautiful women on that stage, all those beautiful black women, African-American women here at FSU, and seeing that they will bring another consciousness to the community, and not only to the university, but the community, and uh, that's very important. And you on point, starting to, I mean, Christopher's piece is extraordinary. Um, for young people to see that you can be all of that, but you can't just be that unless you do the work. And you've always been about doing the work. <laughs> so, you've always been about doing the work. But I love the fact that you all help each other know that it's about the play, that it's about the work, but if you have no joy in the work, then it doesn't get to, to doesn't get to shine on everyone. So, me, yeah, I say, yeah, I say, I say, and I love you both so much. I live in it. I live in it. Live in it. I 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 live in music. Is this where you live? professionals. You know, sometimes when you're working with students, you just tell them how to work, how to be in rehearsal, how to do, but you know, they were, they were professionals, and so that wasn't an issue at all. So it was just, it was just a joy, you know, just kind of unleash 
their own creative spirit as well as the work. I think when I first met them, they both were trying to figure out, okay, what does this mean to be back as a student? <laughs> okay, yes. now suddenly I'm back as a student, and people right. are saying, you got to be this place, and there are these expectations. And, and so I hope I was helpful with that transition, mm. because I think it sometimes is a difficult one when you've been out in the professional world and you're back as a student. But I could clearly see that both of them were going to bring such a high standard to the department, mm -hmm. you know, that they were going to be an inspiration to the students here, um, not only by you know their work ethic, their technique, their you know the spirit. And so even though as they were struggling with trying to find their way through being a student, it was just it was always wonderful just to see that 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 talent and that commitment. The transition from Cleo's company to um, FSU was a difficult one because I had to be a student again. Um, I learned a lot in this time. I grew as a person to stand in my own um, honor, um, who I am, and just stand in it even if I'm by myself. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that it'll help me um, really move forward in the things that I want to do. I've learned um, I'm not alone that I have people and energy in the universe to help sustain me. And I can take that now into the next phase of my life. It was really difficult. I agree with a lot of what Carol said. Um, and a lot of it is the way you work. I think that it was difficult learning that I now have to do, there are certain requirements of me that are different than they were in the past, um, where it was about performing, it was about entertaining, now it's about self-development in a different way that being in a company was and that that's what you're focused and you have to trust these people that you don't know to guide your life and to guide your career and to do what they think is best for you when it may not make sense to you when it may not go along with the plans that you have for yourself but to surrender and i think that, that word is probably the, the thing that i learned most in this experience is to surrender i think about and I think about this often, but um, about 90% of the reason that I came to Florida State was because of um, my relationship with Carolyn Sagey. Because at, at the time that I was making a transition between Cleo's and back to, that, back to academia, I wasn't sure that it was the right decision for me to make back in, going back into academia and communicating with Carol as often as I did her first year here in my, and I was still at the company with Cleo's. I realized through all of the um, the reflections and some of the experiences that she was having in academia, that those were experiences that I wanted to have also. And coming back to academia, I think that, as Carolyn Sagey have said, already said, that it, it really is a difficult transition to go from professionalism back into the academy because of the demands and expectations are so much more different. And there's nothing in life that prepares you to take on the challenge of going from professionalism to academia your goals in life have to take on a new shape and a new a new image because when you're in professional life you see your world your future going in one direction and once you go back to academia you have to mesh out all of those two aspects together to kind of mold your own world into where this new place in life that you plan on going. Sagey and I have similar shared interests as far as movement vocabulary and I've had the opportunity to work with him on this piece, but I've worked with Carol also. And I think Carol comes from a more um, emotive and emotional background, so I was able to um, bring forth past experiences, because I'm from the Caribbean, and take Seiji's material and fuse them together. And um, I just want to say that working with the three of them, Lawrence and I entered the program together, and it's their relationship that is the experience for me. I think them leaving and, and Lawrence is getting ready to leave and I think that's probably going to be my sustenance and help me to finish my program while they're not here because Carol has given me information. Um, she's so informative. Her experiences and Sagey and I have the same um, movement vocabulary and Lawrence has been very much to me what Sagey has been to Carol and it's a bittersweet moment because it's going to be hard to see them leave. Thank you.
How did I meet Carol McCoy and Sagey Gamage? My first year here at Florida a and University, and I came over to Florida State because I'd already done work at Florida State in, for summers in 97, 98, and 99 in the summer called the Summer Dance Institute Urban Bush Woman. I was the director. So I have a, lo a close and long relationship with Florida State. So I come over to Florida State as my touchstone, and I saw these, all these incredible dancers you know, mature, had a, had, had a professional career, and I said, well, I can find work for them. So I talked with them, and they came over to the AMU and decided, yes, they'd like to work with me with this company, Orgis' Contemporary Dance Theater, and they became my assistants, artistic assistants. And I hired them, they'd done choreography, they helped me teach the classes, they worked with the students, the students looked up to them, saw the possibilities in their bodies, and in their enthusiasm, that is Carol's and Sagey's, and they, we just worked and continuously since then. But make it sustained, don't make it sharp. Sustained before you have to do the next thing. You just go straight up, and then you just keep going. Okay. side, jeté, look this way. Glee side, jeté, look over your other shoulder. Then when you PK, change your focus to here to the corner. Yes. So do that again for me, please. Please side jeté. Please side jeté. And then everyone change your head to your PK. Actually, I kind of like the PK. So when you open, step forward, then turn, change your, your foot here, and then step forward, and the arms slowly go up. It's not sharp. It's not ta-da, and then it slowly go up. It's just slowly continuing. So uh, we got to work together a lot, um, and what was particularly great about that is that I mm, felt like I needed to really get myself back into shape, because I'm going to be performing next month. And um, so I started studying with Carol, um, doing Pilates. So uh, what was wonderful about it is that we both, we both saw each other every day, and we got to work together every day. She saw me teach and she could see where my strengths were and where my weaknesses were and she could address all of those issues in our Pilates sessions together and um, I got to see her every day in class and work with her just in terms of she's she's already at such advanced level but to work uh, in terms of her qualitative work and her artistry and um, it was just a lovely exchange I felt like it was less about um, student and teacher and more about one artist uh, exchanging with another artist. I'm um, so moved by her courage and her artistry. Uh, I think she takes huge risks and she um, is willing to open herself up and be vulnerable to an audience, which is a very scary thing to do. Um, but by doing that, she shares something with us that is uh, it, it's just very rare and very beautiful. So, um, from what I know of her interests, I, I've, I imagine her dancing in some companies, uh, I hope, for some years ahead. But I also, uh, from working with her in the Pilates studio, realize what, a, what a, an extraordinary teacher she is. She is very supportive, and she's very organized, she's incredibly responsible, um, she's encouraging, uh, she has a great sense of humor, so uh, I also can see her teaching and um, helping other dancers to find their way through this profession.
I would like to see Carol embrace everything the universe has to bring to her. And I know that's going to be a lot. But I know she has developed some incredible talents here. She's made herself very marketable. She's going to be Pilates Masters soon, very soon. And many people are talking about her expertise in that area and going to her for body work. So I'd like to really see her hold on to grab that opportunity and work with dance companies and dancers of all ages to get their bodies healthy, whole, and to educate them about their bodies. And I think that would be a niche for her. And we need to understand how the body works and get into these body sciences. And I'd love to see Carol take that route and, and open that door for so many more of us, as well as continue to, um, to teach. She's an incredible teacher. Tonight was so special. It touched me, it moved me. I was blown and tickled and was like in a hallelujah moment because, you know, I could just, at every moment, I would kind of rewind and go back and say, wow, this is where they're going, I'm going, wow, this is where they are. And both of them surprised me in terms of choreography. Now, I knew they could dance, but I did not know that they could choreograph and that they loved to choreograph. But there was some joy that came out of that. They really were role models for people here, whether they realized it or not. They brought so much professionalism to the department. Because, you know, as an 18-year-old, you're trying to tell them what it is to be a professional, how you have to enter the studio, how you have to work, how you have to rehearse. And then for them to see two people who embody that, that's a really important part. So, I, you know, it, it makes my role as an educator much easier mm. when they can see it. And now, like, even seeing the concert, several students come to me and say, oh my goodness, mm -hmm. oh, okay, I'm going to class, I'm going to work. <laughs> they have motivation, Yes, right. yes, and mm. so I think that the, it, that's, I think that's the advantage of a university offering, like the returning professional MFA that we offer, because it, it, it benefits the university as much as it does the student. It's so different than running your own school and theater and dance studio. And, and we're a little bit isolated, really. Mm -hmm. We're not in the university setting, although I've taught in universities all over the world. And I always love the university. I love it. But we've never been in the university. And I think when I heard that Sagey and Carol and even Lawrence uh, Jackson, that they were going to go to the university, my brain couldn't couldn't grasp it. I was like, excuse me, you are what? I felt like it was, it was not, I wasn't, I couldn't see it. I couldn't see it. I, I, I was very sad. I thought they might stop dancing. I thought that their, all of the work that we had done to grow them and to mature them in ways that I, I knew, I, I knew what we did to grow there. I knew the journey. And I knew it was painful, I knew it was difficult, it wasn't easy. Um, being in a room with 13 people every single day, studying from 10 o'clock in the morning until 4.30 every day. And having choreographers who, some of them you really understand, some you don't, some really speak to your body, some don't, but you have to do the repertory anyway, and do the rep. And um, so I knew how much they had grown, but I didn't, I couldn't make the connection of, I didn't know the department well enough. Um, but I did know that they were going to bring something. They were really going to bring something. And I said to both of them, all of them, I said, I hope you know what you're bringing. It's very important you're clear about that because then you have a role. You will have a responsibility. Um, 
And I think it gives me great joy to know that they really took that. I mean, they took it very seriously, very seriously. Mm -hmm. And yet, it looks like they embraced it with their hearts and not with their heads. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm excited about. They, uh, they had to open even more. And they had to explore things that possibly they had not done because when you come into a company and you are just an answer, you don't choreograph and you don't teach on the company, you may teach in other places, but you don't teach on the ensemble. And so I think that this was a, a really wonderful um, leap for them, for both of them, all three of them, but even more so coming together, which it broke my heart, because I'm like, oh Lord, I'm losing all these good I, know, I, I thought I would just die. Okay, let's just be clear. I know, I and I knew, I knew where they had come from and I knew where they were growing. And just when they got there, when I said, now they become real assets for the company, because now they can teach, they can be role models for those in the company. And I think that our company did suffer with their leader because they even today will talk about Lawrence, they'll talk about Carol, for those who were able to dance with them. Mm -hmm. But those who are coming up and don't have those role models can be brilliant and be wonderful, but they don't have that same, they don't have that same um, root. Sound of my fingers, sound falls so full of music you could make a river where your arm is. Hold yourself in the music. Hold yourself. Hold yourself. Hold yourself in I'm gonna really miss them. They've grown so much in terms of their um, finding their voice in the field. Yes, they came to Tallahassee as these seasoned performers, but now they're not only seasoned performers, now they're seasoned professionals in the field. They know how to conceptualize, create, and teach dance on so many different levels with so many different bodies and levels of professionals. I'm Cleo Parker Robinson, Executive Artistic Director and Founder of Cleo Parker Robinson Dance, and we're in Denver. This is the 37th year of my company, and I'm just so blessed that both Sagey and Carol were in my company, and now I'm trying to remember how many years. I'm thinking five, but it couldn't have been that long. Um, and I didn't realize that they were gone for three years because I had missed them, but I didn't realize it was so long. And yet when I saw them tonight, I went, that wasn't long at all because they accomplished so much in a very short amount of time. And I'm just so proud of them, and I just have no idea where their journey is going to take them. But I always pray that it takes them back home, because I think now the things that I might have felt they might not have gotten when they were in a company, I think they can come back and share with younger dancers mm -hmm. and become the teachers mm -hmm. that, I, that I know they are. We thank Florida, we thank FSU, and all the elements that have come together to provide us with this moment of love. Uh, we hope we can sustain it, but it will take us home and take us through the rest of our lives and know that we are part of a whole that's bound to succeed wherever we go. Thank you for watching. <laughs>